Hi, my name is Tim. I'm a psychologist and counsellor with an interest in nootropics, so-called smart drugs, because I believe that, while not for everyone, there may be some people for whom a little bit of outside assistance in the form of nootropic substances can have a substantial positive effect on their motivation and quality of life. I don't advocate breaking the law or taking anything that could be harmful, so I hope to present a fairly balanced view of what the costs and benefits associated with nootropics can be. This video is about my experience with modafinil, and in particular its side effects that may not always be focused on. As with any substance, different people may react differently, so I can only really speak from my own experience here. For those who are unfamiliar with what this is, modafinil, sometimes known as Provigil, its brand name, is a eugeroic, that is, wakefulness promoting, drug that is officially licensed for the treatment of sleep disorders such as narcolepsy, as well as in some cases of shift work disorder and occasionally ADHD. There is a practical difference between a eugeroic like modafinil and stimulants such as caffeine. Stimulants affect the nervous activity in the body, providing a much more physical effect, while eugeroics tend to be a bit more subtle because they only really affect the brain to give that sense of mental alertness. One of the common complaints when people first take modafinil, particularly if they're someone who's taken any other psychotropic drugs or medical stimulants such as Ritalin, is that it doesn't always feel like it's doing anything, so you may well find that this is the case for you. Just for starters, I've been taking modafinil for about three years. Initially, this was pretty infrequent, as low a dose as I could get away with, and usually one or two days a week. Modafinil normally comes in either 100mg or 200mg tablets, and while some people go as far as cutting tablets in half to get 50mg doses, that isn't an exact science, and so I've normally stuck to 100mg per dose for the consistency. In the past year or so, this is up to about 100mg per day, 6-7 to seven days a week, and then occasionally a second dose of 100mg later in the day as needed. There have been times that I've taken 300 or even 400 milligrams in a day, which is the maximum recommended dose, but except in cases where I'm exceptionally tired and really need that additional wakefulness, I tend to find that with modafinil, less is more, with higher doses providing little in the way of extra positive effects, but noticeably pronounced side effects. So to begin with, why would you want to take modafinil in the first place? As I say, it is actually prescribed normally for sleep disorders that cause excessive tiredness during the day, so for some people that is the main appeal. I have heard of people routinely using it to push through jet lag and normalise their body clock a bit quicker when travelling, so that primary usage shouldn't be overlooked, especially as if you don't have a condition it's prescribed for and you take too much or a dose too late in the day, you're likely to find it difficult, if not impossible, to fall asleep that night, and so you may end up paying the price the next day. Most people who buy modafinil do so for its reputation as a cognitive enhancer. In terms of its effectiveness as a cognitive enhancer, there are a really mixed bag of reports in terms of how effective it is. Some early scientific studies found no particular boost to memory performance except in people who were sleep deprived, where it made them score pretty normally. Some more recent studies have found that, yes, it does seem to act as a nootropic in some tasks, with the rule of thumb being the longer and the more complex the task, the more benefit it seems to confer. For the most part, though, when people say they want a cognitive enhancer, they aren't usually talking about literally wanting a pill to make them smarter. I plan to cover this in more depth in another video, but if we take the movie Limitless as an example, the one that triggered a surge of interest in nootropics, the actual boost to intelligence is arguably less important than the surge of enthusiasm, motivation and focus that the fictional drug NZT provided, and that is something modafinil can give. Modafinil's main reputation is one of laser-like focus, with all the pros and cons that that entails. Now since I take it daily, that effect is somewhat toned down. I do still get a focus boost and have to be careful what I'm doing when or shortly after I take it, but it's not absolute. I can still switch tasks if needed or get distracted. Which brings me to side effect number one, tolerance. The official word in the medical research carried out when testing modafinil was that there were no tolerance effects, but in practice most people find there to be some, though the extent to which this happens may vary. Some say the research was biased. Another take is that because the effect that they were measuring was how well it kept people awake, 
they weren't really looking at other peripheral subjective effects like focus and motivation. And focus and motivation are the effects that will usually disappear the quickest when taking it regularly, which is why a lot of people recommend that when taking modafinil as a nootropic, it should be taken infrequently, with occasional absolute breaks from it, possibly taking a different nootropic in the interim if needed. As I say, in my experience, those effects don't disappear altogether, even if taken daily. But since I tend to have a pretty ADHD-like brain most of the time, it could just be bringing me to a bit of a baseline. I have noticed a slight diminishing effect in terms of how well it keeps me awake as well, but much less so, and it is still pretty effective at keeping me alert when I need it to, even taking it regularly. A bit of a side note to this, though, there are actually a couple of genes that can impact how your body processes modafinil. For some people, it will just do nothing. They essentially have a genetic immunity to it. And unless you already know that you have this gene or do an expensive test, you're not likely to know that you're immune to modafinil until you try it. Sorry. On the other hand, though, there similarly exists a subset of people who are highly sensitive to modafinil, who probably won't have any issues with tolerance either, so biologically it's pretty luck of the draw. It's also worth noting that, as with many medications, grapefruit inhibits the body's ability to break down modafinil, meaning consuming grapefruit in any form, even just the juice, tends to magnify the effects. It also interacts strongly with caffeine, which can be a good thing if you're looking to stay awake, but it also means you need to be mindful of your caffeine intake. You may not normally have a bad reaction to caffeine, but its effects may also be amplified when taking modafinil, so be aware. Side effect number two, headaches. I take it as pretty much a given that you will get a headache at least the first time you take modafinil. For some people this never goes away and it happens every time they take it. For me, it's mostly just if I forget to drink because modafinil will make you pee more and you will get very thirsty, especially at first, which is why it's so important to keep up your fluid intake. Speaking of which, side effect number three, smelly urine. Not everyone comments on this, but it is actually another very commonly reported side effect. From what I can tell, it's because modafinil breaks down into a sulfurous compound in the body. So when it is expelled, it smells about as unpleasant as you might expect. This can be a consideration if you do anything that is subject to drugs testing. Although outside of competitive sports where modafinil is banned, it's not usually a screen for substance. It's just something to keep in mind in case the odour brings up any questions. Side effect number four, tense jaw. This one might not be as commonly reported, but for me is the most unpleasant. Particularly at higher doses, for me, my jaw starts clenching and I have to consciously stop myself from grinding my teeth. Other people may just experience this as anxiety rather than a physiological effect. I don't feel particularly anxious on modafinil, so perhaps it is just the same thing showing in different ways. Anxiety is a fairly common report though, so be aware if you already have anxiety or are predisposed to it that you could make things worse by taking modafinil. Side effect number five, withdrawal. Again, this doesn't get focused on because a lot of people say that this doesn't happen with modafinil. And while it may be true that there's no true dependence and withdrawal in the same way as you might get with a stimulant drug, I still feel pretty terrible the day after I take modafinil, sometimes a couple of days even if I've taken it for a long time. Modafinil's half-life is 12 to 15 hours, which means that after that time you've still got half the dose in your system. This, combined with its wakefulness effects and the way that it can hinder sleep quality, means that you should be prepared to feel a bit zombie-like if you've used it to push through your limits. On modafinil, you won't feel tired, but when it does leave your system, you're likely to feel extra tired until you're able to properly rest again. There are other aspects which, while not side effects per se, are also things to take into consideration. I mentioned laser focus having pros and cons, because it can be a double-edged sword. The fact is, as much as you'd like it to, Modafinil can't do all the work for you and force you to do the tasks you've been procrastinating on. It may make them feel less unpleasant and help you remain focused once you have started, but if you take a pill and then start scrolling Facebook or watching Netflix or playing a video game, don't be surprised if you then check the clock later to find that the whole day is gone, you've forgotten to eat, and you've wasted all the time you'd set aside for something productive and important. Think of Modafinil like a cannon. Very powerful, but unless you point at the right thing in the first place, it will be at best useless and at worst destructive. Another thing people find is that along with this focus, modafinil can change how they socialise. This again can vary wildly, and for me does tend to be fairly positive, as modafinil puts me in an energised and outgoing mood. But for some people it can be profoundly negative, both for them and those around them. 
A fair proportion of people taking modafinil notice that they become withdrawn and, and antisocial. The focus they experience is just so intense that if anyone interrupts them for any reason, they can become irritable and aggressive over even the slightest thing. It's always wise to see how you react and stop using it if you find that you're experiencing a lot of negative effects. How do I manage the negative effects myself? I've gone back to a lower dose when I can and sought alternatives that can help me get some of the same positive effects without the side effects wherever possible. Now, anything pharmaceutical is naturally going to put more of a strain on the body than natural food supplements that the body's used to coping with. So I started substituting with these to give myself some time off. There are some several vitamins and minerals that can really boost focus, memory and concentration. In particular, choline, which can be really hard to get sufficient quantities of in your diet, and a lot of people are actually deficient without knowing it. My favourite natural substitute for modafinil is a supplement called Brainzyme, which is fairly new and I was initially pretty sceptical about. But actually, in my experience, it does seem to compare very favourably. It comes on within the hour, like modafinil, and whether it's due to the aforementioned choline which it contains, uh, matcha green tea, which I know has thionine, which is another natural nootropic, or L-tyrosine, which I think is similarly triggering similar dopamine pathways to the ones modafinil does. In any case, I found I can at least get a similar level of performance through taking that to what I can achieve on modafinil. And in some cases, actually, better due to not having my creative thought impaired by the very linear, driven modafinil focus. It just depends what task I'm doing. I certainly find that I can switch tasks as needed a lot better on Brainzyme anyway. I'll provide a link in the description so you can check that out. I won't be putting a link for Modafinil there since I do have a prescription for it and that's how I get mine, so I can't really endorse any one website online, but I am aware that there are numerous sites out there that sell it. As a word of warning though, it can be a risky business buying it online depending on where you get it from. It is still illegal to supply prescription medications, which this is, without a prescription. So sites selling it do tend to get taken down a lot, and they may not be always the best quality when you do get the tablets. If you do choose to go down the natural route, my particular favourite in terms of comparison with modafinil is the Brainzyme Professional, which is their mid-range option. And that seems to work out a bit cheaper than buying modafinil online from what I've seen when researching for this video. Particularly as the brand name stuff, Provigil, can still be fairly pricey, even though the patent has now expired. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe if you found the video helpful, and let me know if there are any other videos that you'd like me to do on this subject of neurotropics or modafinil, because it is a big subject, and it's not always easy to find the answers you need online. Until next time, stay safe and be smart.